I'm about to make myself a scrap metal art fish and in doing so I'm going to need some bits and pieces from my uh, my junk pile. Okay, so uh, this is what I've pulled out to start with and the other bits and pieces I'll be getting myself um, a shear similar to this one in here and I'm going to have to cut out a couple of um, me some more junk a couple of pieces to make the make the head now this is what this was based on one that I've already made and some scrap metal that they had that just seemed to be the right parts so I'm copying that design all right so first thing to do is to get the plasma cutter fired up and get stuck into this one Okay, so now we have our basic shapes cut out, but there is uh, there's quite a bit of um, slag on the outside. Let me just show you. So you can see there's a, a bit of a slag build up on the outside of it, and uh, considering I did it freehand, I suppose it's got to be got to be part and parcel of uh, what I deal with. But there's an easy way to get rid of that stuff. And I think I tried to show you in one of my previous videos, but if you just give it a tap of the hammer, you can see most of that comes off. Um, I'm still going to have to do a bit of grinding to tidy it up a bit, but it saves a lot of messing around with those edges there. Okay, now that I've got all that. Uh, Slag off the end. It's time to time to get in here and uh, give it a good clean up and just tidy up those little bits of edges and what have you. Um, doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to have all the sharp edges off because I don't want people hurting themselves. All right. So uh, important safety safety shield and earmuffs. Let's see if I can get everything on at once. And away we go. Okay, so I've finished cl cleaning up the uh, metal bits and pieces that I cut with the plasma cutter. I've got everything all in place ready to go, um, so let's have a look at the layout and see what I've got here. Have so a look down here. You can see here's the uh, metal pieces that I've cut. Okay, and there's the picks. Just move some of this crap out the road. Here's the disc shear. Okay now I've also got a piece of gal pipe now for all you people out there saying oh you shouldn't be welding gal pipe. Well I won't be welding the gal pipe I'll be cleaning the gal pipe up before I weld it. Okay but that's actually just going to go through the middle of this just for a bit of extra support and also because then I'll be able to thread a chain through it and everything will stay in place. When I weld I'll probably be welding 
the picks to each other on the back side so you won't see any welds on the front at all. And then the only other thing I've got to do after I've done all that is find something useful for the eye. So let's go and have a look in my junk box and see what Just another look. another one of my junk boxes in here. Uh, and I could always knock that out, but that probably looks a little bit too big. Uh, no, it wasn't me. There's all sorts of bits and pieces in here that I can use. Yeah. So this what I used on the last one was a bearing and I think I'll probably do the same again this time. Unless I can find something a little bit different. No, I think I'll probably use a bearing again. Uh, that's too big. Oh, maybe this. Let's have a look and see what they come up with. Now the eye would be sitting probably about there and that doesn't look too bad at all. That one or that one. That one sits a little bit lower which is probably more true to, to the effect. But I might find something else in the meantime so the next stage is to clean up the back sides of these and uh, get ready to weld them all up. So more grinding and more more cleaning up and uh, I'll probably drop this in a in a vinegar bath to get rid of the galve. Okay so this is just a bit of a side side shoot to the um, to the construction. I've talked about uh, the galvanized and I've talked about uh, soaking it in vinegar. So uh, all you've got to do is whack it in there yep. and all the vinegar over the top. Now this vinegar has already been used once for a, a degal, so I'm not sure how good it's going to be and hence what the reason it's actually brown and it's uh, got a little bit of rustiness to it. But um, leave this soak overnight maybe and you'll probably find that uh, next day all that gal will be just brushed straight off. Alright so I'm going to let that sit. Um, leave it soak overnight and I'll come back to this whole project tomorrow. Well, I might do a bit of cleaning up in the meantime. Alright, uh, we're uh, coming up to about 36, maybe 40 hours since I put the um, gal pipe into the vinegar solution. So let's have a look and see what we've got. So that's where I left it. You can see that something's actually happened there. There's a nice little foamy build up on top. So let's take her up and have a look. So I've got the water running over it and you can see where I've been rubbing it with my finger. The, uh, it's actually taken a lot of the uh, surface off it. That's bright steel under, underneath. And if I hit it with the wire brush, or even just a normal scrubbing brush, Uh, it does a fairly decent job of cleaning up all that that gal that's on there. So I'll give this a good clean up and see how it goes. We may need to do one more soak with it. Yep. So now that I've got everything all ready to go, it's just a matter of starting to weld and and uh, put it all together. So uh, I'll, uh, I won't video all the welding because it's pretty boring, but uh, um, we'll see exactly how it turns out at the end of it all now. So we saw welded it up. Um, I've tried something a little bit different this time and I think it still looks okay. Um, so let's have a look and see what we've got. So here's the back side of it and my rods are actually a little bit better this time although I did change from um, gasless to gas and had a bit of an issue with that weld there but the rest of it looks pretty pretty decent. Alright so let's just uh, flip it over and have a look and see what's on the other side. I'll just put this on the stand. <laughs> Still a bit warm in spots. Yeah. 
All right, so uh, here we are. I did uh, run a weld down there just to tidy it up a bit. The last ones I actually welded behind so you couldn't see them. So I thought I might try something a little bit different. Plus I welded all around the eye this time just to give it a little bit of a, an extra definition. So uh, the next step now is to rust up all that bright steel. And that's a special concoction I've already made up using uh, hydrochloric acid and copper. So I'll paint that on and uh, see how we go. Okay, so it's about 20, 25 past 11 at the moment. I'm about to put on my rapid rusting uh, uh, solution, which is a combination of hydrochloric acid and some copper soaked in it. And uh, you brush it on, leave it on there for a bit, then uh, spray a bit of water over it, and uh, voila, rust. So let's have a look and see what goes on. So here's our solution in here. As you can see, it's a little bit green, and that's from the copper. So if I now just angle this down so you can see me painting it on. Hopefully it's going to be in, in the shot. So you can see it's painting on, and as soon as I paint it on there, you'll see that the... Well, it's a little bit warm in spot still. But you see it gets a bit of a coppery tinge to it. And yes, I probably should have some rubber gloves on, but if I could find some, I would. And I think I know where they are now. So, I'm just going to paint this all over. And today's an ideal day for it too, because uh, there's a little bit of a moisture in the air. And the rust will come on a lot quicker. I've already painted the back, so this is just dressing up the front. And we'll see how we go with that. Okay, that's all done. Alright, as you can see, already it's got that coppery tinge to it. So I'll let that uh, that dry on there. Try oh, this a bit down the back here. Okay. So I'll let that dry for a bit and then I'll spray it with some water and we'll watch what happens in a, an hour or two with the rust. Alright, so I've let it sit for a couple of hours out here now. Um, and as you can see, it's uh, the acid's had a bit of an effect on it. So now the next step is to spray some water on it. That's all it needs. Just a bit of water. So here we go. Okay, the time is now um, 3.20 and um, as you remember I sprayed my acid etch on there, on my acid uh, treatment on the uh, fish at uh, about 20 past 11 this morning. So let's have a look and see how far it's gone. You can see it's uh, having quite an effect and I've only sprayed it with water a couple of times so the rust is picking up quite nicely there. And on the back side it's, uh, it's still picking up a bit there but uh, a few more sprays and this time tomorrow should be should be pretty perfect. And as you can see it's a pretty average sort of a day out here. Um, but uh, yesterday I uh, put my <laughs> thanks guys. Yesterday I put my rapid rust on and uh, let's have a look and see what it's like. We had a bit of a rain overnight and look at that magic. Isn't that a big difference? Yeah, the, the bits there and, and what's it like underneath? Okay, so where, the, where it didn't rain is still looking, well, it's not too bad. But uh, you can see that that, uh, that rust treatment makes a, a hell of a difference to it. So from here, the next step is to uh, seal the rust. It's not like it's going to fall apart, but uh, sometimes you need that rust sealed. Called penetrite. All right, so uh, as it says, it makes paint stick to anything. So you put that on there and basically it, uh, it stops the rust dead in its tracks and seals it up. And if you want to, you put, put a clear coat over the top or whatever. Um, if it's going to be outside, probably don't need to do anything with it. Um, it'll probably outlive me anyway. Um, but that's it. So that's the end of this uh, this video as far as I'm concerned um, and uh, 
hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll look forward to the next one. See you later.